Good evening, everybody. I will start in about a minute there. Yeah? Welcome for the 10 days of daily tips. Okay, um, I just need to confirm that you can see me clearly and you can hear me. Could I get some 111 in the chat group so I know that you can hear me? At least those who are already watching, could you just type in 111 uh, so that I know that you can hear me yeah, loud and clear? Okay, very good. So I'm getting some one-on-one -on -one confirmation. All right, excellent. Um, good evening. Um, starting today for the next 10 days, I'm going to share with you uh, tips on the, um, the right mindset for financial freedom. Now, I think it's a topic that is very interesting and is something that everybody likes uh, because everybody wants to have financial freedom. And uh, But I'm going to define to you what is financial freedom to me because it could be different for different people. For some people, it's... Um, a big car or a big house. Ultimately, yeah, you can have a big car or a big house and, you know, could have lots of money in the bank. You could have jewelry. You could have, uh, you know, many things. Um, but I have certain criteria which I use when you know, I talk about financial freedom. Um, definitely lots of money, but there's certain other things which I want to share with you. And uh, the right mindset is to be able to, how do you achieve that? So for the next 10 days, I will cover step by step the 10 mindset you need to have with regards to um, uh, achieving financial freedom. Now, uh, it is important for you to understand that I am planning to do a talk. Uh, no, eh? you need to know that I'm going to plan, I'm planning to do a talk probably on the after the 10 days in order to be able to maybe then explain the different types of businesses you can go into and which one will actually give you what kind of benefits. That will be on a later stage, yeah? But in the 10 days, I at least want to get you to have an understanding about uh, financial freedom, the mindset, and that, Everybody can become financially free. Everybody can be rich if they want to. There's no um, such thing as some can and some can't. Yeah? I need you to know that. For, so I'm going to start off with just telling you that. That's not a tip yet. I'll tell you what's the tip for today later. But I want to tell you that when the sun rises every day, the sun shines on everybody equally. It doesn't go to someone fair and shines less because they are fair or they are, they are, they are rather the other way around. I go to someone who's fair and shines more and comes to me because I'm darker skin. It shines less. Because um, the sun doesn't do that. The sun doesn't choose whom to shine. The sun will shine equally on everybody because the sun knows that uh, every human being, every soul is, is born to, for greatness. In fact, being financially free or abundance is your birthright. It's your birthright. It doesn't matter who your parents are. It doesn't matter what your star, your astrology or whatever, whatever date of birth, time, all that doesn't matter. I think, you know, I teach law of attraction and ho'oponopono and I, I tell people that any one of you can be become can become financially free. And I hope after listening to my tips for the next 10 days and maybe then joining into the, the, the some of the programs I already do or keeping in touch, I will be able to guide you and then you will know exactly how to achieve financial freedom. Now, when you talk about financial freedom, I want to just elaborate a little bit. First of all, in the beginning that there are two ways a lot of people make money. Either they work for somebody else or they are in business, okay? I'm not talking about hereditary income and, you know, parents leaving money, all that is limited. I'm talking about the general, most of the people, they make two money in two ways. One is either they work for people or they actually have business. Now, it is very important for you to understand. Robert Kiyosaki, who wrote a book called Rich Dad Poor Dad, very clearly says 95% of people are in the employee category. And I have to tell you, they, they are not rich. Because when you work for somebody else, unless you're very good at saving, unless you're very good at planning your finances and investment, and not a lot of people have that kind of an intelligence and knowledge to be able to be financially free when you're working with somebody else. So you need to know, as I'm giving this talk, I will cover both for people who are working as well for businesses. But I'm one of those who believe that you need to do business. I'm a person who believes we can, in, in quite a number of religions, it doesn't matter what religion, Many of the religion actually says if you've got 10 types of income in a, in a, for you, nine of it must come from business. Nine of it must come from business. And that means it's always important for you to have business income. So financial freedom here I'm talking about is more with the business income. But I will tell you, if you don't want to do business and you just want to work for somebody else, I will tell you exactly what you need to do as well in order for you to become at least managed financially. But definitely I'm very skewed towards business. Uh, how to do business, what to do, and whatever not. So listen to me for the next 10 days. You know what I'm trying to talk to you about. Yeah? As I've told you before, my parents were rubber tappers. I grew up in an estate. And uh, along the way, I've read a lot of books. I've done a lot of things. I've failed in many things. But 
I've been able to uh, look at how my life could be. And I was able to do many things that I'm happy about. And most of the things I'm sharing with you is today, things that I've gone through in life and not from the books I read alone. I read a lot. I learn a lot. But I practice first before I teach. Yeah. OK, so let me go before I give you the tip number one, which is today. I want to tell you in my definition, what is financial freedom? Because many of you, when you came for this talk, you know, and you heard about uh, Mr. Kathy is doing this talk on financial freedom. I think many of you wanted to come in, you know, quickly uh, 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 listen to me. And you probably thought I'm going to teach you how to make lots of money, how to make lots of money, because a lot of people want to just make lots of money. Right. But I need you to know that I have four definitions for financial freedom. This four is very important for me to know somebody is financially free and well made. OK, number one. Number one is uh, financial freedom means you have a wealth ratio more than one. You must have a wealth ratio more than one. You, I know many of you don't know what I'm talking about. This is tip number two. I'll talk about it tomorrow. I'll, tomorrow I'll teach you what do I mean by wealth ratio must be more than one. I'll teach you tomorrow. So that's number one. Very important. Only when you have your wealth ratio is more than one, you are moving towards financial freedom. Not a big car, not a big house, all that is immaterial. What is important is your wealth ratio must be more than one. Number two, you must have time, uh, money, health, and happiness. Very important. Then use financial freedom. You must have time because you need to have time to spend for your family, yourself, blah, 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 for your holidays, whatever. You need to have money, obviously, to really have a great life. You need to have money. You need to have good health. No use having lots of money if you, you, know, you can't enjoy it. So you must have good health. And, of course, it must all bring in happiness to you. And that is the second definition of financial freedom. Third definition is, I already told you just now that uh, my definition of financial freedom is business. And I need you to know the income you're getting must be coming from helping another soul or enriching another soul. Very important. That's tip number one today. I'm going to talk to you shortly. Number one thing is this. I, I, I think I've introduced this book to you before, uh, The Science of Getting Rich, you know. And I've told you many times, if you want the book, just uh, WhatsApp me. I'll send you an e-copy of the book. But the book really tells you that the, the one thing everyone must do is to be able to do something to help another human being to have a greater life. Then you become financially free. You become happy. A lot of things come to you. So a lot of people don't realize this. A lot of people don't realize this. And I want to start off by telling you, I don't want to, you to listen to my talk for the next 10 days and think um, it's all about the big car and a big house and money. A lot of people don't even come for my talk because they think, ah, he's going to talk about making money. No, I'm not into making money. I'm not that. I'm just telling you that your charity begins at home. Your family is number one. You need to take care of your family. You need to give them the best education and whatever. Not, right? So it's important for you to understand that your money that you bring must come from helping another person. That's very important. Another human being, another soul. I'll talk to you a little bit about it later. Number four, remember four criteria for financial freedom. Eh? Fourth criteria is you must be humble. You must be humble. No matter what car you drive, how big you are, whatever you have, how much money, you must be humble. Humility is very important because the moment you become egoistical, ego, immediately, Everything start coming down. A lot of people, I just I tell people, please don't post a lot of things on social media because the moment you post on the social media and say I'm this and I'm that, basically you are portraying to the world, <clears throat> see, I made it, you know, and that becomes an egoistical thing, E G O, and ego, E G O is ego, right? E G O stands out as aging God out. So the moment your ego comes out, you are aging God out of your life, and you think <clears throat> I'm the big one, and that's when your downfall starts. So financial freedom must be long term and must be permanent. OK, so I want to quickly say before I give you tip number one today. All right. Tip number one, I'm going to give you. But the four things eh, that I define as financial freedom, which I'm going to talk about the next 10 days. Number one, wealth ratio must be more than one, which I'll cover tomorrow. Number two, you must have time, money, health and happiness. Number three, your income source must be from helping another person. Not helping means like giving donation. I mean, your income comes because they are happy. That's what I mean. Eh? Your income comes because you've done something for them. That is what I mean by that, which is what I'm going to share with you today as tip number one. And humility. No matter how much money you have, no matter what you have in your life, no matter where you live, okay, how many cars you have, humility, humble. Because at the end of the day, we all are going to die. We all are going to go to the next level and we are going to be ashes or whatever you call it. But you need to have this humility within you, no matter how much you have. OK, now you might not agree with whatever I say. This is my personal view and this is how I look at financial freedom. Eh? So let's talk about today. Mindset number one. Remember, I'm going to tell you 
10 mindset for the next 10 days. Eh? So today I'm going to talk about mindset number one. Mindset number one is when I enrich other people, I become rich. That's mindset number one. If you want to become financially free, you know, uh, carve it in your brain. Eh? When I enrich somebody else, I become rich. So you need to enrich someone else for you to become rich. Now, what it means is very simple. Whatever you do, whatever you do to make money, I'll give an example. Let's say you do food business. Okay, you are, you know, nowadays a lot of people are doing catering, you know, doing cake business, uh, brownies, la, food, la, whatever. Whatever you do, this is what you need to do. Your food must make another soul happy. And that should be a focus. Your focus should be, what can I do? How can I cook? Make sure I put the right ingredients and I make sure I make them, because when they're happy, the blessing comes to you and you ultimately, God will bless you to become rich. It's very important. Many people don't realize this. Many people will say, uh, when, you see, this, I, I, we always, I always have seen this happen. They start a business. They put good ingredients, do good food. Everybody eats. But along the way, they shot, cut corners. Huh? They put cheaper oil or put cheaper ingredient, whatever. Food tastes hopeless. And what actually happens is the, the focus becomes money rather than making somebody happy. Because the moment you make somebody happy, you also need to understand the blessings will come from money, but the blessings also make you healthier and happier because someone else is happy. Remember I said or not, you want to make money, you need to think about how do you enrich somebody else. Whatever you do, whatever you do. So if you're in the food business, think about everything you do about the food businesses, make somebody happy. Yesterday, a young lady talked to me and she said, uh, call me, Anne, I have in front of my house a stall. You know, how do I make sure my stall grows bigger? I said, girl, whatever you do, make sure people like your food. Make sure people enjoy your food. You, you cook with your heart. You cook with... Why is it that our mom's cooking is always good? Why is it our mom's cooking is always good? Because your mom will put heart and soul to cook. Because she loves you so much, she wants you to enjoy the food. And when you think like that, rather than thinking of money, See, a lot of people think of, oh, I want to be financially, I want to have a big car, I want to, I want to have a Lamborghini, I'm going to miss it. No, you will have all that you can have. Don't worry about it. But that should not be objective. Mindset number one, my way of making money is if I enrich somebody, I'll become rich. That's mindset number one. So this mindset is the one that's going to make you very rich long term. Short term, ayo, listen, there are many ways to make money short term la. But I don't think you want to make money short term. Short term money never lasts. I think if you go and do a statistics of all the people who uh, win lottery, not most people, eh, not all, I wouldn't say all, win lottery or people who you know did certain things and made some money and they're lucky and make some money, many of them are broke. Many of them cannot because the money that comes in sometimes won't last long because you read, you can, you can take the money, nothing wrong. If you, if you win lottery, good for you. But what you need to do is now make sure you use part of the money to make someone happy or make people happy, do something. That's why we say give charity if you need to. Because only when you do. Many of you don't know this. You know, I want to tell you this. You know, we have Gunting Highlands, correct? And Gunting Highlands, you know, they do casino. And a lot of people go and gamble. Of course, a lot of people lose money and whatever. You might be wondering, how come they're still growing and doing very well? The reason is because Gunting Highland also owns Dama Chai. I think you know the 4D company, Dama Chai. I don't know whether you know that everything that Dama Chai makes is given to charity. Everything. Because I, I did training for Damachai before. They got about 300 employees. And I, for a fact, know that most of the, almost all the money they make huh, is given to charity. If you go to uh, Visma Ganting, where their office is, you'll see a lot of people queuing, a lot of charities queuing up to take money from Damachai. You see, Damachai is owned by Ganting. And so Ganting, what they do, they do a lot of, uh, you know, casino, people lose money, blah, blah, blah. People make money as well. But to a certain extent, a lot of people say that's sinful, right? But you see, they have also done this. They know they make the money. So now they also have this company called Dharma Chai, which where they take the money and give it to charity. So you need to understand. So um, I, I don't want to go into dwell into that, but I just need you to know whatever you decide to do today, whatever you decide to do. I mean, whatever you decide, do think about, uh, think about how can I make somebody happy? You know, one of the compliments I always get is in a day, I get hundreds of WhatsApp messages, hundreds of WhatsApp messages. Every message I'll reply. Every message I'll reply. People say, wow, Mr. Kathy, you got time. Because you know why? When you make somebody happy, good things will come to you. When you enrich somebody, you become rich. Money will come, but a lot of other things also come. So it is very important for you to understand. You're going on. Uh, clothes. Let's say you sell clothes. You must think not about how do I sell clothes. No, you must think, how can I my, my clothes make somebody happier? If somebody wears my clothes and she goes out there and people compliment her, 
she gets a, 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 a boyfriend or girlfriend or she gets married because she wears the sari I'm selling. She wears the clothes I'm selling. And they get complimented. The boss is so impressed with them. That's where you become rich because you are helping another people, person enrich himself. So everything you do, you have to have this objective. Now, like I said, you might agree, might not agree with me. That's okay. It's your choice. But I'm just giving you my version of what makes me happy and what I consider financial freedom. Let's say you sell supplements. Okay. If you sell supplements, for example, vitamins like, you know, MB vitamins, right? The goal will not be, I want to, you know, go diamond. I want to go crown and I want to go. No, the goal will be how many lives can I change with this vitamin? How many people will be healthier? How many people can lose weight with this product? How many people look better and healthier? When you go with that objective, you become very rich. That is financial freedom. So a lot of us will not, uh, insurance, people sell insurance. You know, people say, I want to be MDRT, Mr. Karthi. I want to be a COT, Mr. Karthi. I want to be a TOT. All this is insurance. But the thing is, you if you go and say, I want to sell five policies or 10 policies or 20 policies because I want to be an MDRT and drive a BMW, you're in trouble. Because that will be there for you. You can sell and get a BMW, but you won't be rich. Long-term tabule. You know why? Because you need to understand every product you sell, every service you do, you need to be able to uh, provide it to enrich somebody else. Like I keep telling you again and again, huh? enrich person. When you enrich others, you become enriched. Makeup item. Same thing. If you sell, you know, a lot of um, multiple marketing companies sell makeup items. Same thing. If you're really selling makeup items, you must think, you know, how can my makeup make uh, other people happier? How can it make more beautiful? Not like, I oh, yeah, just sell only like, you know, a lot of people, when you do now Shopee, Lazada, and you get all of this product online, eh, sometimes you get really cheap products and you get so disgusted because people cheat you. What do you see in the, in the picture and what they send you is two different products. And you might think, oh, they cheated me. Don't worry. God is watching. Don't worry. God is watching. But you don't do that because you want long term. You want financial freedom. You want time, money, happiness, and wealth. Um, health. health eh? Remember this. Time, uh, wealth, happiness, and health. You want this? Understand everything you do, whatever business you take part. Uh, unit trust. Same thing. You don't become an unit trust agent and sell or because people got money in EPF and, you know, or they got, or they got unit trust because they should invest. You need to go and talk to them and say, listen, when you retire, you need funds. Is your EPF enough? Why don't you do this? EPF give this money. Always, always remember this. The objective of your product and services is actually to enrich the man. Because when you enrich that person, you become enriched. I'm telling you today, my friends, I've, I know this for the longest of time. I've read this book many, many times. And the books again and again tells you this. Not only this, I'm currently reading another book. And that book again tells me, okay, I'll tell you more about the book once I finish reading. It's 1,283 pages, so I'm reading the book. And that book is an enhancement of what I'm teaching now. And that book says the same thing. If your outer intention is to help somebody else, everything you want in life will come to you. And I thought today, being mindset number one, I should start out by telling you that because I don't want you to listen to me for the next 10 days thinking, oh, if I, I go and do this business, I go and do that business, I will make lots of money, I can do it. Because many of you don't realize that what you do. Now, I also want to touch a little bit on, say, for example, people who do, let's say, Forex or stockbroking, you know, buying, sharing, shares. So, you see, that is personal. You don't work, you don't do business. That. Like, if you're selling a product, then you are enriching somebody else, whatever you're doing. But what if I, I'm doing stock? Yesterday, I was talking to a, a couple and this lay, a gentleman was saying, I'm into stockbroking. I'm buying stocks, you know, I'm selling a share, you know, share market stock on my own. Or somebody says, you know, I'm Mr. Karthi, I'm doing Forex, Mr. Karthi. So this is all personal, correct? I mean, they don't deal with people because they buy and sell from their own investment money. How do you become rich? Well, it's very simple. You need to understand what is the objective of getting the money. If your objective of getting the stock market uh, money because you want to make sure your children's education is taken care of, because you want to help your charity, because you want to make sure your parents are able to take care of themselves, because you want to buy a house for your family, because you want to take care of your... Fine, because you're... When you enrich somebody else, you become enriched. But if it's an ego decision, I want to drive this car so everybody will look at it and say, oh, you're so successful. That's an ego decision. You will not be rich long term. You can be rich short term, but not long term. So whatever you do, my friends, huh, whatever you do, I just need you to look at it is if you are doing something on products and services, you need to understand how can I use my product and service to help somebody else? Because I know if I keep helping them, God will help me and I will become very rich. That's a fact, total fact. You'll have money, 
You'll have time, you'll have uh, happiness, and you have health, for sure. Very important for you to understand that. If you're in a particular product or services, which is you alone making the money, then what can the money be used for? And think about the ulterior, uh, uh, not, uh, not ulterior, ultimate reason for that. And when that is focused, again, many of these books tell you, what are you planning to do with the money? In fact, this book, there's one paragraph, it says that when you have faith and purpose, you become rich. Faith and purpose. Purpose means why you want money? Signs of getting rich. You want to be rich, right? Signs of getting rich. You want to be rich, right? But why? You see, the book clearly says God will give you. But why? Is you an egoistical decision? So that I can have a car and I have a house and a jewelry. Or is it because I want to rich and rich another human being? So I want to finish off today's um, session by just telling you, my friend, mindset number one. Whatever you want to do, you want to work for people, you want to do business. Obviously, I'm encouraging you to do business. Is when I enrich other people, I will become enriched. And that's how I start off my financial freedom, my journey to financial freedom. Okay, my friend, thank you very much for listening to me. I'll see you again tomorrow, sharp at eight o'clock. And uh, you will be now. Please go and subscribe to my YouTube channel under Kathy Swillingham because this video I'll post it in YouTube channel later tonight. So when you are subscribe, subscribe to my youtube channel every time i post a video automatically you'll be notified so at least you know i'm posting many many videos there yeah so with that thank you very much i'll see you sharp at eight o'clock for tip number two which is how to increase my wealth ratio to more than one i'll talk to you tomorrow bye bye everybody thank you